even my own son, when he became a Christian in the Philippines, we had an amazing um, service. And who wants to give their life to Christ? And so many people give their life. And Josiah, Josiah I, didn't, I didn't see him standing up. And so he stood in the chair. He still did, I still didn't see him. And so he stood on oh. the table. He stood on the table, waved his hand. He said, Dad, pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, my goodness. And so that's when he gave oh. life to Christ, you know. That's Beautiful. Marvelous. And anyway, um, I didn't have any dramatic change of lifestyle at age eight, as you can imagine. <laughs> but something happened at age 11 that really changed my life. I went to a youth camp. And in this youth camp, I mean, Philip knows that I went to quite a traditional um, Pentecostal church. But when I went to youth camp, I saw young people worship, praise the Lord, lift their hands, speak in tongues. And I thought, it's only 11. I want that. And so I remember going out on a Wednesday night, lifting my hands, saying, God, I don't understand it. But I'm going to high school in three weeks' time, and I need your power. And I oh, felt the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I began to speak some little words, and I realized right then until right now, the river's still been flowing in my life. Hallelujah. And so, again, you know, encourage young people. It's almost become untrendy. It's almost become, well, that's a bit, you know. No, they, we need an encounter yes. with the Holy Spirit. At the age of 11, Absolutely. I encountered the Holy Spirit, you know. Came back, went to high school. But in high school, never really, I was never really sold out for the Lord. I never told anybody about Jesus. I, I went to the youth the church all weekend, but during the week, I, I wasn't living for the Lord. And then something happened when I was 16. My, my cousin, who was, a, who was a fisherman, 21 years old, loved the Lord, you know. Um, he was killed in a car crash. He lived in a little village called Gamery. He was taking his, his fiance home to Peterhead. Was that Jimmy West? Way home from Peterhead. No, his name was William Jack. Okay. I, I, Uncle I, 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 I'm, I'm speaking Scottish. I remember when Jimmy West was, was no, killed no, in no. And what happened was nobody knew to this day what happens in a straight bit of road, and he's gone. And I remember 20, his, his funeral was like two days before Christmas. He bought all his gifts that day for everybody, oh and he wasn't there. And I was so angry with God. I was 16, and I was so angry. Why did you take him? He loved the Lord. And the Lord said to me, don't point your finger at me. Will you give me your life? And I remember at the age of 16, maybe 17, getting down on my knees at the end of my bed and saying, God, if life can be as short as 21 years, I want to give you every single day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I felt the presence of God again. Mm -hmm. At that time, the youth group had gone from about 30, 40 people down to about six or seven. Then the pastor in the next few weeks asked me, will you be a youth leader in church? I think you can be the youth leader. I was only 17. I was one of the youth, you know. But I said, God, if you can help me in this, I'll do it, you know. And honestly, over that next um, year, two years, God began to move in the youth. People come from Peterhead, um, everywhere, Banff, uh, Gamery, Aberdeen, Sunday night. And, and, you know, we used to have, in the old days, with a, a guy in a piano, Peter Dreisel on a piano. But God said, get a band. And so we started up a band, you know. This is 1980s, and um, yeah. with a guy on the piano, with a guy on the bass guitar, I learned the guitar. And unheard all of a sudden, of in the Scotland, presence folks, of God. Unheard of, yeah. Oh, that was, that was radical. And you know what? Um, God began to move in the youth. And so many people give their life to Christ. And we, we just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then in that time, God began to say, Mark, I want... Now, in my family, nobody ever even went to higher education. Yeah. Nobody went to university or or college. And I just found out just recently, my plan was to be a journalist. I wanted to be a journalist in Aberdeen. And so um, I was, I got my O grades. I was taking my hires. All of a sudden, one Sunday night, this guy came into my, to, to, the, to the house and said, Mark, I've got a great job for you. I said, what is it? Selling fish down the fish market. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yeah, you'd love it. And my dad said, well, that'd be great. And so next day I went down for this interview to sell fish. I didn't know the difference between a haddock and a whiting, you know. I didn't know anything about fish. But anyway, before I, within a week, I had this job. Now, my dad told me just like six months ago, he purposely designed that. He, he, he recognized people go to Aberdeen to university and the backslide. Yeah, yeah, my son's lost, not yeah. going to backslide. So I'm going to make sure he's going to work here. And, you know, I became a fish salesman down the fish market. Four bucks a car now. One, 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 all that kind of stuff. And I learned to use <laughs> my voice. You. That's crazy. That. Yeah. And um, and then one day, God, I really felt God called me to go to Bible college. Uh, Assemblies of God Bible college. And I thought, Lord, I'm too young. I'm too young. And then God kept on saying, I want you to go to Bible college. And I remember going to a prayer, prayer meeting one night. 
And I said, God, if you want me to go to Bible college, I don't want to leave Fraserburgh. Fraserburgh is utopia. Isn't that right, Philip? It's utopia. It's the most beautiful, wonderful place with the most nicest people. If nobody left that's Fraserburgh. Why, that's why you're in Wales and I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I did get it wrong somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, I went to spare meeting and I said, God, make it clear. Make it clear. You know, how many of you know that when you challenge God, he loves it? Yes. Every time in my life when I said, God, show me. Show Lord, me. I'm serious. Lord, show me. He always loves to show us. Anyway, I went into the, I was going into this service. It's mostly all old people. And this lady in the, in the way end said to me, Marjorie, Mark, I've had this question for a few weeks. I want to ask you tonight. Have you ever thought about going to Bible college? Wow. 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 And so I went into this meeting. There's about 20 of us. And I was saying, God, I just feel inadequate. God, I've got no money. God, nobody will understand what I'm saying. God, I don't have the faith. And the minute I stopped saying that, this old man, Eric Martin, Glaswegian, stood up and said, Yea, the Lord would say unto thee, He knows you. He knows you have no money. He knows you have little faith. He um, knows you don't feel up to the task. But what God has put in your heart, do it and he'll be with you. Mark, let shaking. me tell you something. Listen to me. As you're, pro as you're saying that just now, that was a, a word of prophecy for someone watching. You may be a pastor just yeah. now, and you are called, and God's got, got you to do something, want you to do something. And you've been telling the Lord today, Lord, I don't have the money, I'm not able to do this. Yeah. And God loves you That's so it. much that he sends a Scotsman, two Scotsmen, not just a double portion, a Scotsman. Double one portion. in Wales, pastoring a church to tell you something. It's not your battle. It's not your intelligence. It's not your talent. It is your availability to God that yes. will change yes. the yes. world you live in.